Seven tips to learn boudoir photography fast. Do you want to learn boudoir photography as fast as humanly possible? Well, we can't quite plug into the matrix just yet, but these seven tips are the next best thing. And the last one ties everything together, so make sure you watch till the end. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd, and I run a multi-six-figure boudoir studio here in Silicon Valley, California. I'm going to give you my seven tips to help you fast-track your way to boudoir success. Now, that's going to mean something different to everybody, and that's part of the process. So number one, what do you actually want to achieve? Number two, set clear goals. Number three, focus on one thing. Number four, sign up for a course on boudoir photography. Number five, schedule practice time. Number six, reflect after practice. And number seven, celebrate your progress. Firstly, what do you want to achieve? This is probably the biggest thing because if you don't know where you're headed, you're never going to get there. Do you want this to be a full-time job? Do you want to leave your nine to five and have a career doing boudoir photography? Cool. Or do you just want to earn some extra money for vacations or college fund or, or something else? Like this will be a side hustle. That's great too. Or do you just enjoy photography and you want this to be a hobby? You don't want to worry about making money or running a business. Also great. But be clear with your intentions because your path will be very different for all three of those things. And if you have anything else in mind, groovy. Just do that, but be really clear on what it is you're actually trying to achieve. Point number two, setting clear goals. I know you're like, well, I just said I want this to be my full-time job. That's not a clear goal. Goal. So rather than say, I want to get better at lighting, your clear goal would be something like, I want to learn how to do dark and moody lighting, or I want to do bright and airy. I want to shoot natural light. I want to learn how to use colored gels. I want to do two light setups. I want to learn how to shoot boudoir with one light. Those are clear goals. And when you get specific like that, the next step gets really easy because you can just focus on the one thing. Whereas if you just say, I want to learn posing, well, you could download posing guides. You could watch my training videos. You could go onto Pinterest, type in boudoir photos, and just look at millions of images. And where do you even start? How do you know if it's an efficient use of your time? Probably not going to be. But if you say, I want to learn how to pose with a chair or pose on the floor or pose on a bed, or I want to learn poses for plus size women. I want to learn poses for men. When you get very specific like that, it's so much easier to actually practice. And that's going to lead us to point number three, focus on the thing. If you're spending time to learn dark and moody lighting, don't worry about nailing the pose. Don't worry about, you know, is this the absolute best exposure? Shoot raw, you can fix that later. Focus on the lighting. Now, if you want to learn how to pose on chairs, don't worry if the light's just a little bit off or you're not getting the right kind of expression. Work on the posing. Where do you put all of the body parts to make it look flattering? What angles should you shoot from? Should you get down low? Should you get up high? Should you crop in tight? Should you shoot the whole scene? Play around with all of those things, but just focus on posing on the chair because it's way too easy to go down a rabbit hole and think, okay, well, I'm posing on a chair, but now I'm gonna add in a second light. And oh, maybe if I throw some gels in the background, and then you've already lost it because you're no longer focused. You're just playing, which is cool. I love playtime. I definitely recommend scheduling that, but not focused practice time. So number one, what are you trying to achieve? Number two, be very specific with your goals. And three, just focus on the thing. There's a path here. So stay with me. So if I know I want to be a full-time boudoir photographer and I want to replace my, my current income at my job and just make money with my camera, what are the things I need to learn? I need to learn sales. I need to learn marketing. I need to learn posing, lighting. I need to do financial management. There, there are a ton of things in there with running the business aside from photography. So you make your checklist. I have all these provided in my membership course. So you don't have to worry about thinking of all the things because you don't know what you don't know, but you have your checklist. You're like, okay, marketing, I need to get people in my studio. Well, what am I going to work on 
today. I'm going to work on Instagram marketing. Okay, well, what does that mean? And then you get really specific. I want to create content that builds engagement. I want to go out there and prospect new clients based on local hashtags. I want to do something very specific. And then you just focus on that and don't worry about anything else. One thing I've found that helps with the focusing is to keep a notebook. Just wherever it is that you're working, it's a notebook full of ideas. There's a thing called the Zagarnik effect. Basically, it's short-term memory and it creates open loops. So you you know, at the end of a TV series, when you get that cliffhanger at the end and you just have to know what happens, that's an open loop. So when we come up with ideas for a thing, whether you're working on Bozy on the chair, right? And you're like, oh, color gels, just write down, work on color gels in the notebook and put it aside. Your brain has acknowledged that you're going to do something with that. You started that process. Cool. Get back to posing on the chair. But if you just ignore it, you're going to keep thinking of other things. So this is a way to trick your brain into letting you get back to the thing you want to focus on and not worry about the rest. Then later on, you can always revisit your list of ideas if you need more things to do. So there you go. Psychology hack for you. The Zagarnik effect. Number four, sign up for a course on boudoir photography. Now, Obviously, I provide one. It would be swell if you join the Boudoir Guild because everything is in there that you're going to need to know. But if I'm not the best fit for you and you want to go elsewhere, cool. The point is to learn from someone who's already done the thing and get there as quickly as possible. I'm making money shooting Boudoir and it's 95% of my business. So if you were to go to somebody else who just talked about photography in general, you're not going to learn the nuances that make Boudoir what it is. Also, signing up for a course, you can just go through the content content to learn how to bring in clients with Instagram, what kind of content to create, how to pose, how to light, how to sell, products to do. All of the different things that go into it are just handed to you. You just have to do the thing as opposed to trying to figure everything out on your own because you can watch my videos and there is a ton of value here and you can piece together things by reading books and scanning blogs and listening to podcasts. There's a ton of great information out there, but now you're picking and choosing from like lots of different recipes. You know, think of it like cooking. You're picking and choosing lots of elements from different recipes and you're trying to come up with a new dish. Whereas I can just give you the cookbook and you can just make the dish, get money rolling in, and then you can keep experimenting. But if you try to piece everything together yourself to save a little bit of money, what you're going to spend in time is not even going to come close to the actual expense you're paying. And when I first got into photography over a decade ago, Creative Live had just come out, but we didn't have all these educators providing amazing course material for us. I had to just figure stuff out. And now if I wanted to get started into literally anything, I'm going to go find out who's already crushing it. And I'm going to buy their program and just copy their business model because I would rather spend a little bit of money to save years of frustration learning the thing on my own. And I suggest you do the same. It's just, again, you're going to spend a little bit of money now, but you're going to save years and a ton of frustration. And to me, that's not even a comparable cost analysis. So point number five, scheduling practice time. You are in control of your schedule. You decide what you do at every minute of the day. You're like, no, I don't. I've got kids and I've got to go to work and I've got to do these other things. You chose to have that job. You chose to have children. Most likely you chose to create that life and you can always be flexible with things. If you really don't like the way that your work schedule limits you, you can get another job. Is it going to be really simple? Can you just like leave one day and go to the next? No, but it is an option. You control your own schedule and that's pretty darn cool because you can schedule practice time. So maybe you block off an hour every Wednesday afternoon and this is just time to practice whatever you're doing. You can schedule models to come in to learn posing and lighting. When I was practicing myself, I put my camera up on a tripod, trigger it with a remote, and I would light myself to learn how to do this. So you don't even need somebody else there to work on your lighting. It's a lot easier, but you don't need that. Point is, scheduling your time, write it on your calendar means it's going to happen. If you just say, oh, I'll get to it when I'm done with the rest of the things. I don't know about you, but there is never a point in my day where I just have nothing going on, nothing else to do, might as well practice. It's just not going to happen. But if you schedule it, it will. Point number six, super important, reflection after you practice. This is a thing I do after literally everything I do in my business. Every ad campaign, every shoot, every month in review, every everything, this is how I wrap things up. I ask what went well, what went wrong? Because I want to look at 
I want to look for patterns and think, okay, well, if this is the third time that I've worked with, you know, new models to try and practice this kind of posing, it's just not working. I'm not getting the look that I need. Then what are the commonalities? Is it the verbiage that you're using? Are you not giving enough direction? Are you not actually analyzing the images or following the directions in the posing guide? that told you how to do the thing. Figure out what the problem is. Is that person just really not good at taking direction and it's frustrating and they're hard to work with? Then work with somebody else, right? Or go back and revisit the posing guide and listen to the actual language that's being used. So I'm not gonna tell anyone to stick their boobs out, but I'll say take a big breath in and elevate your sternum. I learned a lot of my stuff from yoga posing because they tell you how to move the body. That's a whole other video right there, how to pose and and the language to use. But the point is you're looking through whatever it is you're doing to figure out where did the process break and also what went really well because inevitably you're going to do things right also so if you run an ad campaign you spent tons of time on it but nobody booked you okay well what went well did you get good click-through rates on your ads did you get new facebook followers instagram followers did you build an email list at all where did the process break because you did something right up until that point and you can learn from that also from learning about the things that didn't go so well which brings me to point number seven is celebrating the wins no matter how small you think they are so i've had ad campaigns even this year, you know, I had one campaign, I booked over 100 sessions from it. I've had other campaigns where I didn't book anybody, but I have enough revenue in my business that I can afford to spend a few hundred bucks on a campaign and not stress over it. That feels pretty darn good. I'm going to go get a burrito and celebrate that. Or maybe I brought in some new leads to my Instagram following. They weren't ready to book yet, but I've got some new people at least engaged in conversations. I can book them later. That's still a win, right? Or I just learned, maybe I don't even want to do this, And I'm going to go outsource this stuff from now on. That's also a win. So there's a ton of things that you can celebrate when you look for what went right. And rather than just beating yourself up over all the little things that went wrong, celebrate all of the wins. Look at everything as an opportunity to learn and to recognize how far you've come and what you've already learned. Because that sort of positive momentum is going to make it so much easier to try again next time. If I only focused on the negative and dwelled on the fact that these campaigns didn't perform as well, it's going to get harder and harder to continue running campaigns. But I'm going to keep doing it because I'm going to get better at it every time. And eventually one of them's going to catch like the one this year that booked me over 100 clients. So I am happy to have a few that don't work out, knowing that I'm going to learn how to do better landing pages, how to streamline my email automation, or just hand everything off to someone else. Either way, I will find things to celebrate to win, and I suggest you do the same thing. It's a really good habit to get into. All right, so there are my seven tips to quickly learn boudoir photography. First, what do you actually want to achieve? Second, setting clear goals. Three, get laser focused. Four, sign up for a course and copy someone else's system. Five, schedule practice time, otherwise it won't happen. Six, reflect on what went right and what you could improve on for next time. And seven, celebrate every win no matter how small it is. So if you want to learn more about posing, about lighting, about marketing, and get really granular, I have tons of other videos for that. So be sure to watch those. And if you want to copy a business model that works and fast track your way through all of this, head on over to boudoirguild.com and just copy my business model because it works. You got this. See you there.